Barber is a best-selling author and founder of Lighthouse Catholic Media. Jesse Romero is a retired law enforcement officer, a former kickboxing champion with a master's degree in theology. And together, they share a passion for evangelization and PhDs in common sense. You're listening to The Terry and Jesse Show. To join the show, call 888-914-9149. Here's Terry and Jesse. Jesse Romero is out of town today. I'm here with Dr. Ed Mazza, professor of history from Azusa Pacific University in California. But before we talk about some of the historical things of our church, I want to bring up that Friday. I want to bring up something on Friday. I'm going to call it, thank God it's Friday as a Catholic, as a Christian. What are we thankful for? You know, like I always say, an attitude of gratitude is welcome just about everywhere. And so I want to ask you, our listener, to call in on toll-free number 888-914-9149 and tell me what you're thankful for. Because if you're not thankful for the blessings that God has sent you, I'm going to call it. I'm going to call you on it here in the Lord's gym. You're missing something. You're missing one of the benefits of being a lover of Jesus, to be able to thank God every day for the blessings that we've received. I'm going to give you a couple of things to several ways to be the best version of yourself. Contemplate the face of Christ and others. Number two, choose to be grateful daily. Number three, use the gifts and talents you've been blessed with. Use it or lose it. Number five, ask God for guidance in all decisions. Ask for help from the saints or saintly people. And offer help or assistance to someone in need without being asked. I'll never forget what I read about blessed Henry Newman, he says, God has created me to do him some definitive service. He has committed some work to me, which he has not committed to another. So today we talk about, thank God it's Friday. Um, even when we have sorrow, I think of St. Thomas More. He said, earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Boy, I have that written in my book. I read that often. So I want you to give us a call if you're thankful to God for what the blessings that he's given to you at 888-914-9149. I want to bring on Stephen from Oregon. Stephen, welcome to the Terry and Jesse Show. And a cheerful good afternoon. And for those on the good. East Coast, I guess it's evening. But That's uh, right, Stephen. Uh, uh, we had talked earlier about an attitude of sure. gratitude, and I have to live my entire life that way. Uh, yes. Being born to a uh, good Catholic family. French Canadian family, um, it was really important to have that type of formation that we weren't wealthy, but we had a roof over our head. We had great, uh, um, you know, we we ate sufficiently and uh, went to great education. Uh, The formation from the nuns back in the back when we were kids. But my father, uh, you have mentioned this a number of times that uh, a a devout mother uh, will very likely get her children to go to continue in the, in the church at about a 20 percent rate but a father leading the family it's a That's much right. higher a significant That's like right. a 60 percent and i can remember mm-hmm. my father taking us to, to mass every sunday 8, 8 a.m uh <laughs> and uh, uh my mother is very saintly for those people who are old enough to remember my mother had to dress five guys i have three brothers had to dress five guys making sure they had ties and clean shirts and then still find two nylons that matched. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so tell I mean, me, tell me what, hey, Stephen. I just want to ask, what were, you, what are you blessed? What are you grateful to God for? Because I want to, I want to have the people here what you're really grateful to. Because I got like six or seven people waiting to tell me that, and I want to hear what are you grateful to God for? Um, I'm grateful, first of all, that I am, yes. I, I am blessed sufficiently. As you mentioned, share your blessings with others that God yes. has blessed us sufficiently that we can share with others, whether it's Betty Chin's ministry for the homeless or the food bank or the pregnancy care center. But yeah. uh, as a retired doctor, people ask me, what, do you, what did God ever do for you? And I said, how about that last breath I just took? He designed an, autonomic, point. an autonomic nervous system so integrally that we don't have to think about each breath we take. And it's life giving. Yep. And so is God's work. So uh, thank you guys for being there. I love blue collar uh uh, evangelism, um, <laughs> yep. and uh, en- enjoyed meeting you at the Elevate uh, in uh, Santa Clara back uh, back in the old days, what, two years ago. Yeah, <laughs> Stephen, you're a good man, and thanks for sharing that. I love it. 
the next breath of air. How many of us can say that? You know what, Stephen? I'm just going to throw one more thing at you. At the end of the day, I have a practice. And what I do is after I do my examination of conscience every night, then I thank Jesus for two or three things for that day that happened to me that was special. And I always have them. And one of them was meeting you. I see, I mean that because you're a medical doctor who you've got the faith of a mustard seed, brother. That's what I like about you. So I just want to say thanks for sharing your witness why you're thankful to God on this Thank God It's Friday show. Thank you very much, Stephen. Thank God It's Friday. And thank God for the work that you guys do. All right, my friend. God love you. Wow. I want to introduce my friend, Dr. Ed Mazza, professor of history, Ph.D. We talk about having Ph.D.s in common sense here. Well, he's got a Ph.D. in history, so I'm going to probe his brain. But just so you know, if you just tuned in and this is your first time listening, uh, Terry Barber, Jesse Romero, we have a show here that we just started on Relevant Radio across America now. Thank you, Jesus. My background is I'm the one who started St. Joseph Communications, Lighthouse Catholic Media, like uh, Catholic Resource Center. Yes, about 30 million recordings have gone out since the 70s. Yes, I'm a very old man. I'm 60 years old, but I've been doing this for 40 years. And I've been on the radio for 10 years sharing the gospel. And I'm more excited about sharing the gospel now that Relevant Radio and Immaculate Heart merged because now we can cover the whole nation. Now, tomorrow I leave for Utah. Every weekend, Jesse and I are at parishes preaching the word of God, and during the week we're talking to you about Jesus Christ. It doesn't get any better. If you ever want to have Jesse or Terry come to your event, just write to the show page, Terry and Jesse at RelevantRadio.com. All right, we've got Nadia. Yes, and Utah. Nadia, Terry Barber, welcome. What's on your mind, my friend? Hi, Nadia? Terry. Um, God I bless you. Thankful. Yes. I'm thankful for my Catholic faith, the priest in my life, my husband and family, um, our <laughs> Catholic station here in Utah, specifically the Jesse and Terry show, meeting both of you at the Divine Mercy Conference in April in Phoenix. Wow. We were the Utah wow. co- couple that came up to talk to you. Oh, I remember you. We'll get, yes, and we have talked off and on the on the phone over the past few Good. months. And then especially because I'm going to get to see you tomorrow in Tuila at St. Marguerite's. <laughs> from Salt Is that where I'm going? <laughs> God love you. Uh, you well, you have a lot to be grateful for. We're all excited. Yes, Good. I have a lot to be grateful for. Well, God love you, and I can't wait to see you again at this parish. And uh, thank you for showing your love for your family and all the appreciation that you have to God. Because, you know, last time I looked, you know, every, every, you know, if God stopped thinking about us, we would cease to exist. That's how much God loves us. So I want to thank you for your witness. Thank you so much. God thank love you. Thank you, We'll see you tomorrow. All righty. We will. God willing. God bye. Bye. If you want to join in on this conversation about thanking God for Friday. Yeah, this is not going to the bar and getting drunk. This is thanking God, who's the creator of heaven and earth, for the blessings that you're receiving for this weekend. You can call 888-914-9149. And you're listening to the Terry and Jesse Show, my good friend, Dr. Ed Mazza. Dr. Ed, what are you grateful for to God, my friend? Well, as the caller said, for the air I'm breathing right now, right? Yeah. Uh, that I got two legs, that I got a voice I can use, you know. Uh, thanks be to God. Now, you've got blessings. And, Dr. Ed, when we come back from this quick break in a minute or two, I want to ask you some questions on history uh, regarding uh, the Crusades and maybe even the Inquisition. I know you're an expert on that topic. And uh, we want to kind of ask you some tough questions on that uh, because so many of us have been asked that. Again, we're talking about... Friday, thank God it's Friday. We're talking about having an attitude of gratitude. Got several people on hold. We're going to take your calls. If you do want to join us, it's 888-914-9149. And again, I'm grateful. I'll tell you what I'm grateful for before we break. Last weekend, I was in New Mexico and Texas because I go out every weekend. I'm driving with my wife on on our anniversary of our 28th wedding, and we're driving down a country road to Santa Fe, New Mexico, about 7.30 at night. It's getting dark. And somebody's driving on the opposite side of the road coming right at me at 70 miles an hour. 
And I see it. I, I hit my brakes. I mean, I, I flip my lights. I honk the horn. Nothing. I pull to the side of the road and stop. She whizzes right by me. Just And I look at the lady's face, and it looks like she was laughing and like she's on drugs or making drink, or maybe she's drunk. Here's the point. I'm grateful. I could have been killed with a head-on collision. How many of you listening right now have had some close calls in cars? Yeah, be thankful. You don't have to call me, but if you want to tell me and thank Jesus for the time he saved you, call 888-914-9149 and give us a witness on how God has worked in your life. Because I'm going to tell you, many times we don't know until the end of our life that it was our guardian angel that protected us. And you've heard me say it before, the unemployment rate for guardian angels is way too high. Put them to work. Put them to work in helping you get to heaven. And this is our Friday show, and we call it Thank God It's Friday, an attitude of gratitudes welcome just about everywhere. And don't forget, this is so powerful. St. Thomas More, one of the great saints, and Dr. Ed, I might even ask you some questions about him. He said, Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. So no matter what happens, when we're living in the presence of God, we can handle anything in this life. And if you want to join in on this conversation with an attitude of gratitude about the things God's worked in your life and that you're grateful for, my number is 888-914-9149. And I come back, I'll take your calls. Also, I've got Dr. Ed Maz, an expert on the Inquisition and the Crusades. He's a professor of history from the College Azusa Pacific in Southern California. Good friend of the show. When we come back, we're going to talk about an attitude of gratitude and so much more. You're not going to want to miss what we're going to share in this next segment because it's going to blow you away and how good our God is. So I just want to say this. Stay tuned. Stay with us. And we'll be back in a moment. Fasten your seatbelt. The Terry and Jesse Show is on Relevant Radio. My seatbelt is on. I'm too blessed to be stressed, too anointed to be disappointed. And if hope was money, I'd be a billionaire. This is, gosh, this is, we're talking about, thank God it's Friday. Our lines are lit up. I want to talk to you about all the things you're grateful for. Felicidad up in California, welcome to the Terry and Jesse show. Felicidad, welcome. Hi, Terry. Hi. Uh, it's my first time to call your, yeah. To, uh, well, thank you to call in this station. I mean, we're listening for so long. I mean, it's been, I think, four years. So, but it's my yes. first time to just share because well, thank of, you. Uh, it's about uh, grateful, what we're grateful for and why, thanks, uh, it's CGIF, right? So, actually, it's really grateful for me because I'm working for four, for two weeks for this project and I've done and I yes. completed it. So it's very God. grateful that God helped me on finishing that. And another thing is it's yes. Friday, every Friday it starts our mission. We're doing actually a black rosary. Uh, it's like uh, we're bringing Mama Mary to uh, a family Good. and then the Mama Mary image will stay there for a week. Uh, I don't know, for a month. And so, so the the purpose of that is so that the kids and the family will learn to pray the rosary. And that's our our uh, weekly activity, weekend activity, our family. Wow. So I'm really glad and very thankful every Friday is Friday time. So we are actually ready to serve God. And that's why wow. I'm really happy. And, Praise yeah. God. I'm so happy you did that. You're doing that every Friday. Maybe some of our listeners will follow your good example. So thanks. We've got so many calls. Let's go to, uh, is it Jero uh, Jerome? Jo Joanne. Joanne. Joanne in Chicago. Welcome to the Terry and Jesse show. Joanne, you're on the air with Terry. Go ahead, my friend. I hear you. I'm talking right now. Uh, I'm God so love glad you. to be here. I'm so glad. I love this. I love this uh, uh, combination of networks together. Everybody in one accord. I think that's the greatest yes. gift we can all be thankful for. Second of Praise all, God. I'm thankful for life itself. I'm a senior citizen. I'm 72 years old. I was born mm -hmm. blind, and you know what? I even thank God for that because it teaches awesome. you how to see with the heart. Wow! Would you repeat that? Is this microphone on? Say that again, jo Joanne. You, you think with your heart? Say it again. See with the heart. To see to with the see heart. With I love it. The heart. 
Wow, that's beautiful. Thank you. You're a blessing. I can't wait to tell my kids that story. That's a good one. Hey, thanks again for taking the time to call us here at the Terry and Jesse Show. And I'm going to guarantee something, because this is the first time you've heard us this week. We here at the Terry and Jesse Show want to lift you up every day and helping you get closer to Jesus and Mary and his bride, the church. So I want to thank you for coming into our show and, and, and helping us accomplish that goal. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank God love you. you. God you bless everybody. Okay. Thank you. Patricia, we're just going to keep taking calls. I've got 12 or 15. I mean, i got to get people out of line here. Let's go, Patricia. What's on your mind? What, what do you think? Priscilla, what are you thankful to God for? Oh, thank Priscilla? you. So I'm very yeah. thankful. Yes, hello. Can you hear me? Okay. Hi. I can sure I'm thankful for my faith. Hello. And um, mm -hmm. I'm thankful for the many um, gifts of our Lord in through the sacraments. I'm thankful for his death on the cross for dying for me, for all his uh -huh. suffering and passion um, that he went through for love of us, of, you know, and I'm just very, I, I'm overwhelmed by the, um, just his blessings and graces through the Blessed Mother and um, just the knowledge that he's, you know, giving me every every day. Wonderful. Well, that's uh, always a good thing to say. Uh, you know, I, I tell people when they talk about their blessings that at the end of the day, here's something that you might want to pray. It's so quick. We give thee thanks, almighty, all merciful, and all loving God for all the blessings that we have received from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. I say that about 20 times a day. Because I want to have an attitude of gratitude to our Lord. And that helps me say, people say, Terry, where do you get that energy? You're five days on the radio. You're out on weekends power preaching the word of God. Yeah, because I'm grateful to God he's given me the time to do it. I only have so many breaths of air. So, Patricia, Patrilla, I want to thank you for your call. We've got so many more calls. Ed, I want to, Dr. Ed Mazza is here. We're going to get to the topic, but I want to continue to take your calls regarding your praise report of what you're thanking god for on thank god it's friday so george welcome to the terry and jesse show it's your turn brother you're on george hey, go terry. ahead hey brother hey man we we used to get we were together at the ymi remember george was that 1978 yeah yes, <laughs> i knew it i know i mean I, I remember that was in Roseby. What's on your? What are you thankful for God for, brother? Because I remember you were a faith-filled Catholic. Only what we're talking forty years ago. Go ahead, George. I got a good memory. <laughs> hey, uh, Terry. Uh, a few years after after that retreat, one month retreat, I went up to the mountains in, in the, near Fresno, California, Shasta Lake. It's in the area of Cl Clovis, California, and to be more exact, Ranchito Falls. So I decided to to climb the mountain zigzag, and like a knucklehead, I stepped into the creek. Now, if the water was only ankle high, I tested the the surface. It wasn't slippery. It, everything looked fine. It was in May. So I said, all right, I stepped in because I wanted to get to the ledge and tell everybody at the bottom that I was okay. Yeah. George, I, hey, thanks for that call, buddy. Listen, we got a quick break. You're a good man only 40 years ago. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Oh, a hard break. I'm sorry. You, you, okay, we'll keep going. That was my my mistake. George, you so you slipped. Did you did is that what you're thankful for that you made that hike that hike up of the mountain? Is that what you're saying? I made it. I slipped and I, and Praise I was God. flying to the ledge, to the edge. And God, I said, "Help me." And and before I was able to finish the word me, I stopped from sliding, yes. and I was able to climb out. Thank I mean, you, Jesus. I was only 20 feet away from the ledge. Whew. Boy, George, we wouldn't have this conversation, would we? Nope. I had wow. my scapular. Yep. You wear your scapular. George, you got to come see us, man. we got to shake hands. It's been 40 years since I met you, uh, and uh, I got to. I bet you right now you're going to laugh at me because I'm bald-headed and I'm an old man. And, uh, you know, I haven't changed much in the uh, other de uh, other departments, but, God, uh, I, last time I looked at my birth certificate, I'm 60 years old. Thanks for calling, George. You're grateful to be God.
grateful to God for this is the show that we're talking about Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Thanks so much for your call. God love you, brother. Thanks for calling in. Wow. Dr. Ed, we've got so many calls, but I want to ask you to tease people when we come back. What can you share with us in regards to the Crusades? When people say something like, hey, you're a Catholic? Didn't you Catholics kill millions of people during the Crusades? I want to ask you to just tease our, our people. What can you share with them that will help us understand what actually went on and not what was reportedly going on? Terry, we are so grateful for our veterans, right, for our yeah. soldiers. Sure. We're so grateful for our police. And that's the tradition of serving others and laying down your life for others. That began in the Middle Ages, mm -hmm. the Catholic Middle Ages, with the concept of chivalry. Uh, so I'm looking forward to telling the folks about that. And uh, just to uh, realize about history, you know, yeah. the past is history. The future is mystery. And what's going on right now it's a gift from God. That's why we call it the present. So the present moment. Boy, that's exciting. So, Dr. Ed, you're going to set us straight regarding the Crusades, and maybe we can get into the uh, to the uh, uh, and to other issues of history with our church. Uh, that's your specialty? Is that your Ph.D.? What is your Ph.D. in? Well, you know, I got a Ph.D. in common sense from you and Jesse, but uh, <laughs> uh, but I, I uh, my Ph.D. is in in history. And I like to clarify uh, Catholic history, church history, because people have so many misconceptions about the Catholic Church. Yep. Uh, and um, if, so if anybody has a question about the Catholic Church history, I'd be happy to answer that. Sounds good when we come back. But listen, we got three minutes. Linda, welcome. You're calling from San Diego. You're on the air with Terry Barber. Go ahead, my friend. Okay. Linda, you, go ahead. Friend. I'm calling. You bet. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Linda. Go right ahead. Okay, so I'm calling to let you know that I was hit by a drunk driver in a oh, no. uh, pickup truck. Um, I was only yes. one block from my home, and oh. I just cried out to Jesus, and yes. uh, I was not injured at all, but my car was totaled. So <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. What a great witness, Linda. Linda, do you have any yeah. devotion to your guardian angel? <laughs> Linda, Other I want to ask. Are you... God. Yes, that's what the angel's supposed to do for you. Yeah, yeah Linda, always, daily. you got a great story. How long ago did this happen, Linda? 25 years ago, but there's been many other ways he's, he's uh, disciplined me and showed up. I love it. Hey, we've got to take a break. Linda, thank you for sharing that story. I'm, I'm in tears. I really am. That is a, a, a tearjerker story. God love you. Thanks for calling in. When we come back, Dr. Ed Maza is going to talk about the Crusades. You're not going to want to miss it. More in a moment. For today's giveaway, call 877-526-2151. Catholic and proud of it. It's the Terry and Jesse Show on Relevant Radio. Thank you very much for letting us come into your home, your car. I made a promise. Dr. Ed Mazza, professor of history at Azusa Pacific College in California, is here to discuss the Crusades. Dr. Mazza, welcome again to our show. Terry, please don't call me Dr. Mazza. Call me the Grateful Ed. <laughs> the Grateful Ed. Oh, I love it. Dr. Ed, tell me a little bit. I made a teaser. I said, so many times people tell us the Crusades were all about how Catholics killed millions of people. Can you set us straight on what actually happened and what were the circumstances of the Crusades? Sure thing. Uh, well, you know, for centuries, the Christians living in the Middle East and Egypt and North Africa and Spain were actually conquered by Muslim warriors. And it wasn't until about the year 1095 mm -hmm. that uh, the, the papacy was strong enough in Europe to ask the knights uh, from France and other countries to uh, go and accompany pilgrims on the Holy Land uh, or uh, on pilgrimage to the Holy Land yeah. to defend the pilgrims and to free and liberate those Christians that were living under Muslim domination. So it sounds like it was a defensive war. Is that a fair statement? I, I, that is how Thomas Madden a uh, very famous professor nowadays who wrote a short history of the Crusades, which I recommend to everybody. That's how he describes it. Oh. It was a defensive war. It was an armed pilgrimage. 
and the and the people who went were volunteers. They mortgaged their homes. What? They sold their stuff. This wasn't like you know you know Uncle Sam is, yeah. <laughs> is drafting listening. you. No, yeah. they, they uh, these were knights. They, you have to understand what a knight yeah, is. Tell us. The Middle Ages were a rough a rough time. Okay, but thanks to the grace of God and thanks to the church insisting on protecting the innocent and women and children and the church respecting the cloth, mm-hmm. they turned they basically turned these Viking warriors in the 800s into the knights. Uh, Christian knights and chivalrous knights of the uh, 11th and 12th centuries. Wow. So, you know, I got to say, it's kind of hard for me to get my hands around this and my mind around what was going on that long ago. But um, what were the major uh, wars that took? Did we did we actually get land back or did we lose it? Or give us some more information on what actually took place with some of these crusades. Sure. Well, as I said, between the year 632 and the year 732, all these Christian countries started to be uh, attacked and taken over by the Arabs. Mm -hmm. And so centuries later, when Europe recovered from the barbarian invasions, as I say, the Pope called for a crusade. He called for uh, selfless uh, acts of self-defense. And so uh, uh, those who were the nobility, those who had knights, uh, had armor and, and swords and shields, they went out and they had to mortgage their properties. A lot of them didn't come back. But they did have some success. In in the year 1099, they managed to take the city of Jerusalem against all odds. Uh, About 80% 80 of them had either turned back by then or they they had died on the way. Uh, And then there was a uh, later crusades also tried to take back the Holy Land because uh, the initial success didn't last for too long. Uh, but um, And then in later centuries, for example, uh, later this weekend, we celebrate the Feast of St. John of Capistrano, or oh, yeah. Juan Ca- Capistrano sure. here in California. Uh, he was a, a, a Catholic uh, preacher who actually preached a crusade against the Turks because the, the, the Turks were this um, uh, fierce, warlike people that actually not only took over the Holy Land, but because the initial crusades were not successful completely, they began to take over Europe, Greece, Bulgaria, uh, they threatened Vienna on several occasions. And, of course, the Battle of Lepanto, Our Lady of Victory, uh, in, in the 16th century, was a crusade of sorts because the, of the, 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 the threat that the, the sultan in, in Istanbul, which used to be Christian Constantinople, mm-hmm. there's, an, there's an example of something that happened. Uh, Christian Constantinople was the capital of the Christian East, but it fell to the Muslim Turks in 1453 and became Istanbul. Mm-hmm. And... Um, so as uh, the uh, we said, Pope, uh, Pope Pius V asked the people to pray the rosary. Uh, so even the common people got involved. Uh, but so definitely in the high Middle Ages, in the early modern period, we have a, a crusading movement going on. Did St. Francis of Assisi have anything to do with the crusades? You know that man that was a peace-loving man that we all know? Well, St. Francis grew up wanting to be a knight. What? But he got, he got captured in a battle against a, uh, a neighboring Italian city. Us mm-hmm. Italians were always fighting with each other. <laughs> did, did I mention that I'm, a, I'm Italian? I think so. You know, there's only two kind of people in the world, those that are Italian and those that wish they were. No, um, I'm originally from New York. I'm a New Yorker. I need my coffee. Where's my coffee, Terry? Anyway, okay. um, so the uh, St. Francis had this idea of bringing about peace. Yep. Uh, since he, did, he couldn't cut it as, a, as an actual knight, he decided to be a, a knight for God. And what he did was... He's, he got on a boat, he went to North Africa, and he wanted to have a little chat with the sultan because he figures if the sultan converts to Jesus, then that's the end of the, that's the, end of the war. Good idea. <laughs> Good idea. So, uh, and, and the sultan liked him. Good. Like, you know, Francis was a little eccentric, kind of yeah. like you and me and yeah. Jesse a little bit, right? And, uh, but he, he got to like him. And, but the thing is, Francis was concerned for his soul. And he said, I want to preach Jesus to you. And even though the sultan could have had him killed for, for doing that, Instead, what the sultan did was he gave Francis and his followers permission to go to the Holy Land. And to this day, the, the church at Bethlehem is in, the, is in the custody of the Franciscans. Wow, that's an amazing story. If you have a question or comment about the Crusades or the Inquisition, Dr. Ed Maz is in. The doctor's in. You can call us at 888-914-9149. I'll repeat it. 888 888- 914-9149. If you just tuned in, you're saying, who are these guys? The Terry and Jesse show just started this week, okay? We're brand new to the East Coast and the Midwest. My background is, for 40 years, I've been involved in evangelization. If you've ever read the Rome Sweet Home book by Scott Hahn and Kimberly Hahn, that couple that recorded his conversion story that came back from Fatima, Portugal, from their honeymoon, that was my wife and I 30 years ago. 
So I've been involved with starting Lighthouse. If you ever have those Lighthouse stands in the back of your church, I train all the, light, the Lighthouse reps. So I'm in, I've been doing this for 40 years, and now I get to evangelize on the radio. For 10 years I've been doing it, but now through the grace of God and through relevant radio and Immaculate Heart merging, now we have the whole country to share the gospel with through Catholic radio, through relevant. So I want to ask you to pick up your phone if you have a question or comment, 888-914-9149. Don't forget to get the relevant radio app for your smartphone. This is a great app, the most popular radio app in America. There's a reason for it. Wait till you pick it up, and you're going you're gonna to love that. Dr. Mazza, we talk about the Crusades and all the work that went on and all the effort and the bloodshed. There were some times, though, that it's a fact that Christians did some things they shouldn't have done. Can we talk about some of the embarrassing things that went on in the Crusades? Sure thing. Well, the thing about war and the reason why it's always a last resort yeah. is because uh, there, inevitably there's going to be uh, casualties and yep. sometimes atrocities. Yep. So uh, when the Christian knights took the city of Jerusalem, it is an unfortunate thing that they, uh, a group of knights, not the whole contingent, but a group of knights did slaughter Jews and Muslims at the Temple Mount. Ah. Uh, and it's unfortunate, obviously, that that happened because that's a human rights abuse. But yep. it's unfortunate that that happened because it stained an otherwise noble victory. And somebody like President Clinton a few years back yep. said that, you know, the reason why the Muslims, uh, certain Muslim terrorists attacked us on 9-11 was payback for the First Crusade. But uh, last time I checked, uh, Bill Clinton doesn't have a Ph.D. in history. And Or, for example, Barack Obama uh, a few years ago yeah. said that lest we get on our, our high holy horse and, and think that we're better than other people, we should remember that just like we have, you know, Islamic terrorists today, that the Christians did some terrible things in the past, too. But you really can't compare Christian crusaders to Islamic jihadists. Yeah, that's shocking that someone in that position would say something that ludicrous. I'm sorry, or, that's... Or, for example, he brought up the Inquisition, and a lot of people bring up the Inquisition. Yeah, they don't, they, go they, ahead. Um, so back in the Middle Ages, there were certain people who were baptized Catholic, but were secretly practicing some other religion. Mm -hmm. It could be Islam, it could be Judaism. Sure. And so the church wanted to inquire into whether these people were really legit Catholics or not. Sure. And so uh, the Inquisition just means to inquire, okay? And what basically most of the time what the, inqu what the Inquisitors did was they asked this, the people to do a penance for, for their sins, okay? You know, uh, some kind of penance, like the priest gives you in confession. Sure. Only a very rare limited amount of time did they ever use torture or did anybody ever actually have capital punishment? So uh, I find it ironic because uh, President Obama in eight years uh, killed more people without a trial using his drones than the Inquisition did over 300 years actually using trials and defense lawyers. And uh, so what we've heard about the Inquisition from, uh, you know, uh, comedy shows or from uh, literature, it's, 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 it's a total... Um, uh, dark and myth myth of, of of Catholicism, trying to paint Catholicism in a bad light. But it, but historians, trained historians who you know do the research and go to the archives, are uncovering, especially over the last 25 years, that the the Inquisition was the most enlightened form of jurisprudence that was being practiced at that time. Because back then, in, there wasn't a defense attorney in other countries. They were burning people for witchcraft. The, the Spanish Inquisition never burned anybody for witchcraft. So when we hear millions of people were put to death, do we have a vi do we have a number that is yeah. more uh, reliable than millions? I mean, let's yeah. ask that question. Uh, there are studies that people can look online and verify this. There are studies that were done that show about maybe three thousand people over three hundred years. What? Over, th as I say, oh, not not uh, millions. Our own country killed more people with with drones without a trial over eight years than than the Inquisition did over the course of three hundred years with a trial. Uh, only. Let, let's say less than one or two percent of, of anyone who went before the Inquisition was ever executed or ever had torture applied to them. You know, that's shocking to a lot of people to hear that because you don't hear that in the public square. There's, there's a lot of myths about the Catholic Church that people don't realize all the good that the Catholic Church has done. There's no institution on earth that's done more charitable work than the Catholic Church. It was the medieval monasteries, for example, that were the first hospitals, the monks and the nuns who were the first nurses. And, 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 and what about education? For example, <laughs> Thomas Jefferson, right, our third president, yeah. and he said something very strange. He said he, he founded the University of Virginia in addition to writing the Declaration of Independence. Mm -hmm. And he said, I hope this, this, this place never has a, a, a theology faculty. What? 
Well, he was a man of the of the not of the Enlightenment. Mm -hmm. In fact, during the Enlightenment, they didn't believe in Jesus anymore in a public way. So, but the thing is this: hundreds of years before him, the Catholic Church established the first universities. Wow. Yeah. Up next, we're going to talk more with Dr. Mazza about the Crusades and the Inquisition. You're not going to want to miss this. Are you ready? This is the Terry and Jesse Show on Relevant Radio. We're back. This is the Terry and Jesse Show is right. We're too blessed to be stressed, too anointed to be disappointed. And if hope was money, I'd be a billionaire. I have my good friend, Dr. Ed Mazza, professor of history at Azusa Pacific College University, actually, in California. And we're talking about the Inquisition. We're talking about the Crusades. But there's a group called the Knights of St. John that go all the way back to the Middle Ages. Who the heck are the Knights of St. John? I even hear it today. Yes, they're still around. Uh, recently, Cardinal Burke, for a number of years, was the cardinal uh, ah. pr protector of them and, and was pa chaplain to them. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially... Well, as I say, you know, just like nowadays, people like to travel to the Holy Land and walk in the, in the footsteps of Jesus. Sure. In the Middle Ages, uh, pilgrims from Europe would go on a very treacherous path to go, you know, follow Jesus in Jesus' footsteps in, the, in Bethlehem, Jerusalem. And, you know, they would, they would need protection. And so the, the Knights of St. John began as an order that would protect these pilgrims. Uh, like as soldiers, as, de as defenders, but also to treat them. That they they uh, they hold the knights hospitalers because they they they, they learn the practice of medicine. Yeah. And um and to this day they actually still do charitable uh, work. In, uh, but uh, but uh, at the height of their uh, power, uh, they were helping to defend Europe against uh, against uh, you know Muslim terrorism essentially. Mm -hmm. um, uh, th th for example, this there's a place called Malta. And the knights were uh, on Malta, and they were outgunned and outmanned, like 150,000 to 300. Wow! You know, it, or 700. It was uh, quite, quite the uh, affair. But God, God saved them, and um, they, 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 like, they still do a lot of good charitable work today. That God bless them. These were these were knights who took monastic vows, uh, poverty, chastity, obedience. Uh, so, um, also during the Middle Ages, there were orders that were established to ransom Christians that had been captured uh, by uh, the enemies of the church. Uh, Our Lady appeared to um, uh, Saint Blessed, uh, excuse me, um, Saint Raymond of, of Penafort. Oh uh, yeah, that's a good story. Uh, a saint who I, I wrote a book about yes. actually. He, um, he, him, and 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 um, I believe it's Saint Philip. No. Um, uh, the, anyway, the King James and, and St. Raymond, but they both had a vision of our Blessed Lady. She asked them to establish the order of, of ransom. And uh, they would basically, they would give themselves sometimes as hostages uh, to, to the Muslims in order to free uh, Christian wow. prisoners. Amazing. Dr. Ed, today, 2017, chivalry sometimes might be going to the side. We've talked about this. But the Catechism of the Catholic Church today talks about using proportionate measures to defend one's family. So for me and for the Mazas, if someone comes into our home to do harm to your wife and your children, we're supposed to, not not we're obligated to defend our family. So in a sense, I'm just seeing if you see the connection from the Middle Ages and today we're still called to defend our family. Is that a fair statement from the connection there? You know, uh, John the Baptist, when he uh, when the people came to him for baptism, yeah. some soldiers came to him, mm -hmm. and he didn't say, "Hey, you guys, get out of here. We don't we don't want your kind here." Yeah. Or he didn't chide them and say, "You're not allowed to be soldiers." Yeah. He said, "Be content with your pay, and don't bully people." Ah. So you know, those too much has been given. You know, much is expected. Or, or as uh, Spider-Man's uncle told him in one of those <laughs> Spider-Man movies, you know, with with great power comes great responsibility. That's right. So. If you want to be a superhero, if, if God has, has, has given you the physique or the, or the power or the strength to, to, to use um, the sword or whatever, to use your powers, you've got to use your powers for good, and you can't bully people with them. Right. Dr. Ed, for those who just tuned in, they're going, who are these guys? It's the last five minutes of the show. You're listening to the Terry and Jesse show. Jesse's out of town at a parish mission. I'll be leaving for uh, my own parish mission tomorrow morning at 4 in the morning. Out in Utah, if you want to have Terry or Jesse or even Dr. Ed to come to your parish, just email us at Terry Jesse at Relevant Radio at our page, and we'll communicate with you that way. We'd love to fire the troops up. I wrote a book called How to Share Your Faith with Anyone. It's become a bestseller. And so for 40 years, I've been trying to help Catholics 
evangelize people through giving their testimonies and giving commandments of how to share their faith. Dr. Ed, for those who just tuned in, we talked about the Crusades and the Inquisition, and I want to just wrap it up with this question to you. How do our listeners learn how to defend the faith on history? Is there any reference, anything, any um, any uh, books or, or uh, CDs or something that you've done sure. that can help people? I know what I know you did a crusade video that, uh, you know, I know the Catholic Resource Center has. They even have your book. Uh, you know, they go to a Catholic Resource Center or is it CatholicRC.org. Uh, but I want to ask you, what other ways can they do it? If they do online, what websites, what what information can help us defend our Catholic faith in regards to history? Because so many times history gets changed and it's revision history. It's true. Well, I would recommend uh, Steve Weitendorf, oh, who's with uh, yeah. Catholic.com. Yeah, he's Catholic, good. Catholic Answers. Yeah. They have a number of his pamphlets and, sure. his, and his books. Uh, I would I would recommend uh, as you said I, I've done some stuff myself. Matthew Arnold has oh, done, he's done good stuff Matthew too. Arnold's done a lot of good to dispel yeah. the myths about Catholic history. Uh, so really, uh, uh, Ignatius Press has They're many good, good titles. Yeah, good source. Um, so yeah, there's no lack of information. It's mm-hmm. just people don't realize that it's out there. Yeah, Doctor Ed, when did the official time? When did the Crusades finish? What year and what were the circum? What stop? What put a stop to the Crusades? <laughs> well. Terry, you know, they went, they went, the, the crusading ideal endured. Even somebody like Christopher Columbus, you know, recently we just celebrated Columbus Day. Mm-hmm. Columbus, when he, when he went, went, uh, discovered the New World, partly because he was looking for another way to get to the East uh-huh. without having to go through Muslim held territory. And he said, whatever gold that we find in the New World, I want it to be sent so that we can take back Jerusalem again and the Christians there won't have to suffer. He said that? Yeah, he did. He had a crusading spirit. He was a third order Franciscan. Not many people know that. And so, and so because he had this crusading spirit, he, just, he stumbled upon millions of people in, in the New World that we didn't know existed and who never knew Jesus. And, and thanks to him that, uh, and, and, and Isabella, uh, they sent missionaries over there. And, they, and how many millions of souls were brought to Jesus who would never have been brought to Jesus otherwise? We only have a couple minutes, but you mentioned uh, Isabel, the queen. And a lot of people have kind of pushed her aside. Can you just put a little limelight and kind of correct what story is with Queen sure. Isabel? The rumor has been spread, and not more than rumor, that she was anti-Semitic. Yes, but I nothing could that. be further from the truth. Yeah. Uh, she had people in her own entourage and people in, in, at, at, the, at, at the Crown, right, who, who were, were Jewish by descent. She, had, she, she did not hate people because of their race. She didn't hate people at all. She loved people and wanted to save their souls. Um, so uh, um, it, it's really a, a topic worth looking into. Miles Jesus, yeah. uh, that order of priests. They sure, did. we're gonna we're gonna cut out now. I thought we were ready for him. Let's do this, Doctor Ed. Your your history is clarifying so many things. The thing the the point about Christopher Columbus, I I would like you to repeat that again because some people think we should just get rid of him, but didn't he have a zeal for souls? Isn't that a fair statement? A third order. Come on. Exactly. He was a third order follower of St. Francis. Okay. And, and he wanted to save souls. And uh, if, if it wasn't for for his um, adventure, you know, yeah. going out there uh, without a flight plan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all these millions of people would never have come to know Jesus. Uh, you know, some people focus on the negative, but we ought to focus on the positive. And as for Queen Isabella, yes. when she heard that, that certain people were being enslaved, yes. she she said, who, who who authorized my my subjects to be enslaved? She was she hated slavery. The Pope at the time, uh, uh, Pope, Pope Paul the Third, I think his name was, came out with an encyclical against the slave trade. Wow! Uh, when the successors of Isabella were not as as righteous as she was, so. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions about the Catholic Church, and you only hear the negative, and I think it's time that the positive got out. Well said. Dr. Ed Mazza, thank you for filling in for Jess Romero today. This has been the Thank God It's Friday Day, and I want to remember, remind you to remember to have an attitude of gratitude all weekend long. And again, thank God for all the blessings that we have received from him today, and make sure that you contemplate the face of Christ in others, that you choose to be grateful daily, you use the gifts and talents you've been blessed with, as I say, use it or lose it, and ask God for guidance in all the decisions of life. And remember, offer help to assist someone in need without being asked. 
Remember what St. Thomas More said, and you can take this to the bank. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. And if you really think about what we're saying today, is God's created you to do some definitive service. He's committed some work to you, which he's not committed to another. You have your mission. That's Henry Newman who said that. Become the best version of yourself this weekend, and we hope to meet up with you again on Monday after we come back from preaching the word at different missions. So keep us in your prayers. We'll be praying for you. And here's the quote of the day from St. John Paul II, October 1995. He said, freedom consists not in doing what we like, but in having the right to do what we ought. May God richly bless you and your family and full sheen ahead. God love you. For today's giveaway, call 877-526-2151. 